The following is paid programming. It's time to talk taxes. New friends, new opportunities, new partners. EG Tax. It's Ask the Tax Lady with Esther Gullius and EG Tax on News Radio 930 WBEN. To reach Esther now, call 803-0930. Toll free at 1-800-616-9236. And cell calls are free at star 930. And now, live from the WBEN studios, it's Esther Gullius. Hey, everybody, it's summertime, and who wants to know about taxes? You do, because EG Tax wants to make sure that you're so smart. And, of course, this is our hour to talk about taxes, and um, we have a special guest this year, I mean, this, this day, this Saturday, and we're going to make sure that you know about this recent change in tax law, which will affect you. Because let's face it, one of the things that, that is most important to you is your pension plan, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Of course, where the phone lines are open to anybody that has any comments, questions, tax-related, financial-related. Our phone number here in studio is 8030930. Star 930 on a cell phone. You can text us at 716-8030930. And of course, with it being a wonderful summer day, probably people are out cutting the grass and having a barbecue. Right, Chris? Well, that would mean the grass would have to be growing. That's true. Brown is not... Brown doesn't grow. The weeds grow like crazy. Well, you just have to keep watering it. <laughs> Yeah, then we'll have a water shortage, an electric shortage, you know, That's true. the fun stuff. But but it, it it's there's nothing like summer in western New York, is there? No, no, no. You know, don't complain about the cold, don't complain about the heat. It comes and it goes and Right. Believe you, me, in the next couple of weeks, in the next few weeks it'll all be over, so Anyway, and we have a special guest uh, this week who's going to talk about pensions. And so those of you, the mo one of the most important things you have beside your home is your pension plan. And a lot of people don't know the ins and the outs of their pension plan. And there was just a newly re uh, enacted law from New York State. And so we want to talk about that. And we want to welcome Char Charmaine Kays in the studio. Hey, Charmaine, thank you for coming in on a beautiful Saturday. Thank you for having me. Okay, so Charmaine is a registered investment advisor. She's with the financial guys, and we all know about the financial guys. And she's going to talk about the New York State mandatory retirement plan called Secure Choice Savings Plan. So what is that all about, and who does it affect, and should we be paying attention? Absolutely. Um, this is not going away. The Kathy Hochul signed into law in October of 2021 to have New York State participate in this program. It affects companies that have 10 or more employees during the year, have been in business at least two years, and are not offering a retirement plan to their employees or have so not. So if you offer a retirement plan, this doesn't necessarily pertain to you? That is correct. Okay, so... Now, it, it is mandatory? Mandatory. There's Which means what does an, uh, let's, a small employer mm -hmm. with maybe 12 employees who never had a pension plan, what's the penalties? What does this employer have to do? The employer, uh, whenever the New York State gets around to sending out the packets to these companies, are going to be required to offer this to their employees. Um, it's a 3% automatic uh, sign-up for the employee. And so the employee, out of their wages, mm -hmm. must contribute 3%? That is correct. They can sign off and not participate, but the point is it must be offered. There is okay, no so employee. If I have an employee, we have a pension plan, by the way, uh, but if I had an employee <laughs> and I'm a small business and I have an employee who says, hey, I can't afford 3%. Are they out? They can sign a form, and these forms have to be kept on record because there are penalties for not having them. They can sign off and opt not to participate. The state program, by the way, is nothing more than a Roth IRA. So okay, so these are all pre-tax dollars going in, after-tax dollars going in. After-tax dollars. And okay, so and and so there is no traditional uh, uh, feature. It's all got to be Roth. 
All rough. All rough. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, 803 930 8030930, star 930 cell phone. You can text us while you're uh, cutting grass or your hay on your uh, lawnmower, 716 830930. We have special guests. Uh, Charmaine Kay's here. She's a registered investment advisor. She's a specialist in pension plans. And be aware that your employer has to offer the New York State Secure Choice Savings Plan was just signed into law. Well, actually, not just, right? No, not just. So now what does an employer do? Let's say somebody's on their lawnmower right now and they say, gee, I didn't know that, and they fall off, (laughs) and they think, gee, am I in big trouble? Are they in big trouble? Well, what's been written in the bill itself is that there's going to be, once they have their uh, act together and have a package available to employers, I'm assuming they're going to You mean you're talking about the state, right? The state. And I'm assuming that that will be sent out in the mail. You actually have nine months from the time that they've actually opened the enrollment to the plan. Okay, so if I have this correct, if an employer is already offering a plan to their employees, now is there like a minimum amount? In other words, like for instance, in my company, we offer an SEP to our employees. I mean, is there a minimum that has to be offered or as long as you're within the federal gu- guidelines for for like for instance an SEP or a 401k or whatever it is you're good to go you mean for the alternatives yes absolutely if you offer if you think about what they're offering or forcing people into it's nothing the employees are making all of the contributions so Any the employer doesn't have to do any kind of a match at all none oh none Okay. So anything that you offer that is above and beyond that should satisfy those requirements. Okay. And And is there a penalty if you don't? Well, I read in the actual bill that it was going to be $250 a day. Oh, that's a big penalty. If people between now and the time this thing opens for enrollment act, they're not going to be stuck in a dilemma. There are so many different ways that they can go to avoid being a part of this program. Okay, so the, if nothing else, if you're a small business employer with more than 10 employees and you don't offer a pension plan, New York State says you have to sign up for the New York State Secure Choice Savings Plan, which is basically a Roth contribution of 3% of the wages that an employee makes unless they opt out. Is that it in a nutshell? That is it. And all from the employee's pocket. Is it, all from the employee's pocket. Now, is it 10 total employees? Is it 10 full-time employees? 10 yes, employees. 10. So part-time, somebody counts. who works five hours a week for you, that still counts as an employee? That is correct. Wow. Mm-hmm. So even if it's a seasonal employee? even if it's seasonal employees. Okay. Because right. it's so, 10 or more employees during the year. Okay, so now besides the New York State uh, Secure Choice Savings Plan that people have to do with the penalty of 250 a day, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm assuming that you're also an expert on all the other savings plan, the all the other pension plans. Is that correct? I know some about everything. All of all them. All right, yes. wasn't that great? <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, everybody has to worry, especially we're watching our pension plans kind of uh, dwindle because oh. of the fluctuation in the stock market. So if you have any questions, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 in a cell phone. You can text us at 716-8030930. We have Charmaine, K- Char- Charmaine Kays here from the Financial Guys. She's a registered investment advisor. Look at your pension, and if you have any questions, give us a call. I'll talk to you on the other side. Hey, family, this is Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, and we're talking about pension plans. And I have to tell you, a lot of people are concerned about what's happening in the market. And if you're in the stock market, you may be concerned about your pension. Maybe you don't want to look at it. Maybe the folder came in last month and you said, I'm not going to look at it. 
I mean, this, this we have a financial expert, our special guest, Charlene Case from the Financial Guys, a registered invest, uh, investment advisor. She's got a few years' experience, and she knows about your pension plan. So if you have any questions about can, maybe you have um, money that you left at a former employer and you've been letting, letting it sit there, about maybe rolling it over, about if you're in a small employer and you're thinking about this uh, New York State Secure Savings Plan, how it affects you, now's your chance to talk, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone, sit, text us at 716-8030930. And by the way, I wanna, we don't have a SCP, we have a simple. Uh, so, yeah. you know, <laughs> I didn't that, think you would have a SEP. I, yeah, I don't have a SEP, I got a simple. So, I just wanna anyway. say, sorry, before we go back to Charmaine, you know, we usually talk about letters. Um, the letter that's out there now is for employers and it's not from the federal, it's from the Department of Labor. Employers are now getting letters saying, Oh, you know all that unemployment we gave everybody? Well, this is your share of the interest that we got charged by the federal government, and we're passing it on to you, the employer. So it is a legitimate bill if you do get one of those from the Department of Labor. It is, unfortunately, something because of COVID that the employers are forced to pay. I just wanted, we were getting Thank a lot you, of calls. To okay, now she was saying that she wanted to say something else about the SECURE Act, right? Yes. The real problem that I see coming up in the future is that they were given a budget, I think it was $3 million, to get this thing off the ground. After that's gone, they're going to be assessing the employers involved in this for the administrative costs involved. Really? And who knows what that's going to be. Wow. So you're forcing somebody to do a pension plan. It's all funded by the employee, but the employer has to be charged for the administration, just like what happened with us with the unemployment, right? Exactly. And as mm. I said, I just hate to see people come up to the time and not have taken action because it's very simple to avoid this whole government-run program. Okay, so how, how does someone do that? Well, every situation is going to be different. It's not just based on getting out of, out of the state program, but make it usable. For example, if a, a business owner wants to, he's interested in putting away as much as he wants, then it's one kind of a plan. If you're simply trying to get out of the state program, you can set up your own payroll deduction plan. The benefit of that is that, again, it's no employer dollars, there's no admi administrative expense, and other than Roth, you can also offer the traditional, traditional IRA contribution as well. Right. So people save money now instead of later. Mm -hmm. The advantage right. of doing a so, traditional. So what these small businesses should do is if they don't want to go into the state program, they want to spend some time looking at what their options are so that they don't have to comply, right? Exactly. Not that they aren't going to offer a plan. They're offering a plan, but it's their own plan that they had. And I will tell you, like the simple, it, it doesn't cost us anything to administrate, really. No, and, and that's one of the plans that is available. The issue with the simple is if you go to a bona fide 401k plan, you can increase the dollar amount of contributions or salary deferrals that an employee can make. Now, for an employee to opt out, do they have to prove they have some other type of retirement plan or can they just say, I don't want a retirement plan? They can just say no. Okay. Sign a form, put it in. Now, the is there a, s a special form that the state's gonna provide? Supposedly, yes. Okay, we so haven't right seen now anything. they haven't done anything, right? No, absolutely not. Okay, but as soon as that comes out, and you want to make sure you keep good records because 10 years down the line, the state might come after you and say you didn't uh, have Sally covered, and, mm -hmm. and you say, well, she opted out, uh, but we threw out those forms in three years, and that's not a good idea. Yeah, I think they've covered that, that you have to keep those forms for three to five years 
but okay. um, it's important to have the form signed. And that's okay. an ongoing thing because it's offered to an employee. All right, I'm Esther Gullis, the tax lady from EG Tax. If you have a pension, if you don't have a pension, if you wish you had a pension, this is your time to talk to, to Charmaine Case. She is a registered investment advisor, 401k specialist for the financial guys, and she's talking about the state of New York, Secure Choice Savings Plan, and anything else, any other pension plan that you might have um, that you might have at work. Again, any question you might have about uh, rolling something over, uh, wondering about uh, what happens if you're losing money on your 401k plan, give us a call, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone, and you can text us at 716-8030. And we got Frank from Alden. Hey, Frank, how can we help you? Hi, Esther. All right, I kind of got a tax question here. Yes, okay. I've got a 401, and it's been tanking, and I'm not taking any money out of it. So right now, our house, our vehicles, they're paid off. My wife and me are living off Social Security. Now, I get $2,054 a month. My wife gets 904 a month. My question is this. If the next cost of living increase is like 8 or 9%, is that going to kick me up high enough to going to have to start paying taxes on the All right, Social you're talking Security. about your on your Social Security, right? Correct. Okay, Chris, tell them the good news. Okay, so do you have any other income besides the Social Security? No, that's all we're taking right now. We're not in touching any withdrawals right now while the, the stock market and everything is so down. Okay. So, so looking at this then... Uh, if you look at an eight uh, percent kicker on three thousand dollars, it's another two forty, right? So he's at thirty five hundred a month, uh, and when you take half of that, it still isn't enough to, for him to pay taxes. Right? Yeah, you got a long way to go. Before long way to go, Frank. You could actually, if you wanted to, use the system to your advantage, right? And take money out of your plan now, a little at a time, to avoid before a larger 72. RMD. Right. And you can just okay. put the money in a bank account or a CD, something like that. Because I was under the assumption the government, the federal limit was like $32,000, $34,000 a year for a married couple filing Before joint. Before your Social Security becomes taxable. So let's just say that your Social Security is taxable. Let's say 10000 of it is taxable, all right, because mm -hmm. only half of it's then there's this computation. But your standard deduction is $28,000. So when you take your 10000 against your $28,000, you are not going to pay taxes. Okay. And Chris is absolutely was... right. If you use, if you use your, uh, your IRA as like a Roth right now and you can take it out, you take it out tax-free. So if you want to call us at 632-7886 on Monday. We'll be happy to tell you specifically how much you can take out tax-free. Yeah, you're looking about fifteen to 20000 you could take out tax-free. Right. Yeah. And not have to pay any kind and of tax. And not have to pay anything. Yep. Anywhere, federal All or right. state. Well, thank you. You kind of put my mind to ease because I was reading too much in between <laughs> the lines. Well, I want to tell you when it comes to taxable, it there's one thing about how much of your Social Security is going to be taxable, but then that has to be understood that it is offset by your itemized deductions or your standard deduction. And your standard deduction is like almost $28,000, so you don't have to worry. Oh, okay, because I was leery about taking anything out of my... No, you're good. Oh, I, would, because I would bleed they... that puppy as much as I could. Okay, because I thought with all the money that I lost by taking money out now, I don't stand a chance of it recovering. Say, if Congress or Senate flip in November, I'm thinking if I take it out now, <laughs> maybe Wall Street. Well, remember, is whatever better. you take out, if you're taking it out tax free and you put it into a, a an investment, you're still continuing to have the money grow. Okay. Because it's not going to be taxed, and you get You're that money, it from a... and you can pay off interest, uh, high interest credit cards. You can put it into an investment, uh, what whatever. But it's going to grow, and it's not taxable. It's pretty cool. All right. Thank you. You guys have put my mind to ease. Good, Thanks Frank. Thank much. you. 
Have a great weekend. You too. Thank Bye-bye. you, sir. I'm Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on cell phone. You can text us at 716-8030930. I know you're barbecuing, but give us a call if you <laughs> want some help. All right, why don't we go to our text, Chris? Sure. It says, I have a real estate company and net around 67000 a year. Can I do a solo 401k? Oh, this is a good question for Charmaine. Uh, Charlemagne. The answer is a solo 401k is available to a, any employer that does not have common law employees. By employer, I which mean, would mean him. Yes, if he doesn't have any employees. And most, I'm sure he's a self-employed real estate. Per, they get it all right. Com- miscompopulated when mm-hmm. they right. So. And and but, so explain a 401k. Explain how remarkable it is. <laughs> and um, and uh, well, of course, I don't know if we have that no, much time. No, we might right want to wait for after we're the approaching break, so. the news. So we're gonna let we're gonna hang you off until the end <laughs> on the other side of the news because what she's gonna give you is unbelievable stuff. So if you're a real estate agent, self-employed person with no other employees, and she is Charlemagne's gonna make you thrilled on the other side. I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 in her cell phones, text us at 716-8030930. We're gonna break for the news and we'll be back on the other side. Hey, to us, you are family. And this is Esther Gullius, the tax lady from EG Tax. 8030930, 8030930, star 930 in the cell phone. You can text us at 716-803930. And don't forget, we have our tax school coming up um, in October. And, for, uh, you know, help you to pay those um, those big uh cost per gallon of gas uh, makes you smarter smarter than the average bear I want to tell you we will teach you so much the class is designed for adults if you have a computer prowess that's wonderful if not we will help you to get a computer prowess because we want to make sure that you understand taxes it's a wonderful thing personally and uh, that's where we get our um, novice uh, tax preparers. We, we can put you in a four-year program culminating in an enrolled agent status so you could go anywhere in the United States and get a job. So um, if you're interested, you can go to our website at egtax.com. But in the meantime, we have special guest Char, uh, Char, Charmaine uh, Kays. She's a registered investment advisor from the Financial Guys. Uh, she's a 401 specialist, 401k specialist, and we were talking about solos the 401k the solo 401k who who does it pertar, pertain to uh charmaine uh, uh the solo 401k is available to sole proprietorships partnerships limited liability companies with no employees also spouses or partners uh so in a partnership both partners can be a part of the plan, also their spouses. So it's own, as long as they have a payroll, if they're on the payroll. The spouses. Mm, the spouses, right. So, so but isn't the spouse a, an, an employee? Not The spouse is not considered employee. It's All a right, special so, exemption. So they're, it, right. they're a partner. That's a partner or a spouse. If okay. that spouse or partner is receiving payroll so if the spouse so if you hire your husband or if i hire tiffany as long as that's it for employees that's tiffany it. can then okay so do a she solo. is an employee but it's a spouse employee exactly okay and for and so example the let's real estate lo- let's blow people's minds how much could a person put into a for a solo 401k plan well, the salary reduction, if they're under 50, of 20500 And if they're over 50, they can put away the 27000 However, if they want to do profit sharing on top of that, they can do the uh, full 61000 max. 
But so they would do sixty-one thousand, which includes their twenty-seven thousand, right? If they were fifty right. or older, right? But, but let's they back could up put away just into a bit. The solar four hundred one k, right? Yeah, go ahead, Chairman. She okay. just want to back up a little. She said, "All right, on the solo, uh, the your twenty-one or, or twenty thousand five hundred or the twenty-seven thousand can be a uh, hundred percent of your income." Where you get into the additional amounts is by taking a, you can't take more than 25% of your taxable income for those extra profit sharing contributions. Taxable so, income or net profit? Net profit. Net profit, because that's mm -hmm. a difference, you know, taxable income and net profit. Exactly. All right, so. You get to the sixty-seven thousand. Let's say that there it was a real estate company with a net profit of a hundred thousand. That would be somebody that could take advantage of the sixty-seven thousand, right? They could take advantage of part of it, so they could put away the twenty-seven thousand, regardless of what percentage of right. their income that represents. Mm -hmm. The balance that they can could contribute would be their 100,000 less the 27, mm -hmm. and then 20 or 25% of that overage as a profit-sharing contribution. Okay, so th this is, a, so really, if you think about it, it's remarkable. Oh, it's incredible. S so, so can somebody come into you, call you, and say, what's the best retirement plan I have out there? This is my situation and give you like three years worth of taxes and you run the numbers to see what's the best way for them to proceed to put money away. Absolutely. And we've been doing a lot of this ever since the uh, Secure Choice Act hit the ground running. Um, what we do is get some information on the individuals in their company and what their motivation for putting in a plan would be, and then we give them their options. The one thing that people are surprised at that we have been talking to is the low cost of offering a full-blown 401k plan. I you know, think now here, here, I mean, I'm just going to be transparent. Uh, Charmaine, we wanted to do a 401k plan, obviously because the contribution limits are higher than mm -hmm. a simple but the costs were prohibitive from well, an, an administration standpoint. I think that uh, you probably looked at this several years ago. I did. And, yeah. The costs have come down extremely. Uh, you, you have an affordable benefit that can be provided to your employees. For someone like you, for example, you're already putting in a contribution for employees. Right. And you can do that same contribution through a bona fide 401k or a safe right. harbor and get the higher limits. Right. So, But I, I, how much is the administrative, administrative <laughs> cost? Well, um, it depends on what type of a plan you're putting in, how many employees you have, et cetera. But uh, a 10-person company, um, you're talking uh, under $1,000 a year. The startup costs, and I don't know, you probably are aware of this, but for a company that has not had a, a plan and starts up a new plan and they have at least one common law employee, the startup costs create a tax credit. So those startup costs end up being nothing. Mm -hmm. Wow. So but the thing is, if that's, they only had one employee, why wouldn't they do a solo 401k? Well, if they had one employee, not a spouse, they couldn't do a, a oh, solo Oh, I thought that forward. they were the only employee. Well, if you're self-employed, you can't. No, right. that's not what you said. No, a solo is simply for the business owner and his spouse Okay. or partners and their spouses. Okay, so you're saying if you're ha you have one employee that negates the solo 401k, you have to go to the full-blown 401k. You're exactly right. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So now on the solo 401k, um, and again, if you're a business owner, 
you listen up. I mean, for instance, if you mm -hmm. think about setting aside $67,000 a year in your pension plan, plus getting the tax benefit for that, I mean, you're looking at almost a tax benefit of $29,000. So you're putting away 67000 and saving 29000 in income taxes on top of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's And mind it's their money. Right? They put it from one pocket to the other. Right. And they're not paying tax on it. Absolutely mm -hmm. remarkable. So now the cost for a 401, a solo 401k, is that, how does that de derive? Well, the beauty of the solo 401k is, is that there are no government filings required until the assets reach $250,000. Okay. Some places charge for the trust document that's required to set it up, and some don't. Okay. So the providers. Okay. So you've really got to shop it around and see what's best for you, what's best, mm -hmm. you know. Ask yep. the question, how much does is this going to cost me up front? Because a lot of people are afraid to ask that question. Mm -hmm. well, what's and so sad, of, and, and I think that, I know, Chris, I think we see it all the time, is that sometimes an, a business owner, the last thing they think of is setting up a, pen, a pension plan for themselves yep. because they're just trying to get through running their business. Mm-hmm. And I would say that if you have a small business, and if that means you're a realtor, right? Yes. If any kind of plan where you're just self-employed, if you don't have a pension plan instituted um, and you're doing SEPs at the end of the year, you could do better with a solo 401k plan. Oh, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and by the way, if you want to talk to, to Charmaine, her phone number is 204-9577, or you can get her at the Financial Guys at 633-1515. And I'm going to tell you, if you're a business owner, with every, everybody trying to look at what the best thing we can do financially, uh, you really should uh, have your ha make sure you talk to her because you want to make sure you have the best financial plan in place so that you're setting aside money so that when you retire you have money set aside for you now Char charmaine do you have people that are like apprehensive because the market has been swinging the wrong way <laughs> oh yes um, but this is the exact perfect time to be investing money um, people have it all backwards in their heads at times Excuse me, the uh, the market has had 19 of these bear markets since 1960. 19 of them, and it's always recovered. This is the best time to be buying into funds. I have a lot of people ask me, "Well, the market's losing. I'd like to not or not make my contributions anymore." Well, over time making these contributions during this down market is going to help them come out of the down market. Because they're because, buying more. Because low. they're buying more stock, right? Exactly. They're buying more shares of these funds right. than uh, when the market was up. This is the best buying opportunity they've had in several years. And I, Okay, it, so you wouldn't recommend somebody cashing out their, their pension plan? Oh, heavens no. <laughs> Whether Either they're we're always Either talking about that. Whether working or at close to retirement or in retirement. Because especially if you're in retirement, you're not using that full pot of money in any given year. You're using a very small percentage of it. And if people are invested, uh, what I think is appropriately, you have three separate pots of money in your investments. You have that pot of money that you're going to look at using within the next five years. You have a second pot of money that's from, you know, 10 years up to 10 years, and then you have that other money that's going to be invested long term. This is meant to last you for the rest of your life. So if, you know, you're not working with an advisor that is paying attention to these things and making sure that your portfolio is rebalanced each year, you should be because these are the times that it's extremely important. Okay, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on the cell phone. We have special guest Charmaine Kays, uh, registered investment advisor, 401k uh, specialist from the financial guys. And I'm gonna tell you, if you're a small business owner, you're an employee thinking about cashing out, 
Now is the time to talk to somebody. Don't do something stupid. It's important to plan. It's important to plan. And you can give uh, Charmaine a phone call, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 cell phone. And we're going to take a short break. We'll be back on the other side. Hello, family. This is Esther Golius, the tax lady from EG Tax, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 on a cell phone. Our tax number is 716-8030930. Whether you're getting love letters from the federal, the state, you don't know what the heck to do, wondering where the refund is, um, or you're somebody that says, gee, my my social, my pension plan's not doing so good. I'm thinking about cashing it up and paying off my credit cards. Um, or maybe you're a small business owner and you didn't even know about a solo 401k. I mean, we're here. We have special guest uh, with Charmaine Case from uh, the ne- from Financial Guys. She's a registered investment advisor. A few years experience, from what I understand, Charmaine, I understand that you're just uh, a, quite a, a pension plan guru. <laughs> you're wondering about your pension. Give us a call, 8030930, 8030930, star 930 cell phone. Now, if you're somebody that's been in business for, let's say you've been a realtor for 10 years and you've never, never set anything up, are you precluded from doing anything? For the... Uh, no, you I can. mean, can you set up a 401k now? Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Um, Any time. The only thing is there are some deadlines that are coming up, which is October 1st. If someone is looking to do a safe harbor plan, for example, those have to be in place no later than October 1st. Oh, on a 401k? On a safe harbor 401k. Okay. okay. And how about for the SEP and SIMPLE? Any, you can open, there are some of those, the different types of programs that have deadlines. However, the, uh, for the most part, people can set up whatever plan they wish whenever they want, no matter how they long have, they... Like, I believe it's the SCP, you have up to the due date of the return. Well, they have to fund it. Right. To fund it, but, but to the also, simple, I think, has to be set up by uh, the, October the 1st, right? Yes, now, yes. you don't have to fund it. You just set it up. You set it up. The document should be in place. <clears throat> and then you have until whatever the deadlines are for which plan you're talking about to make your contributions. Now, what if you set up, let's say you had a simple plan. Mm-hmm. And you've been contributing to your simple plan. Now you want to, let's say your employer says, now I want to do a 401k. Can you roll over the the assets from the simple plan into the new 401k or does do they have to stay separate? Oh, no. It can be rolled over into the 401k and, and most of the people that you would deal with would be uh, preparing that paperwork and taking care of it so it's seamless. Okay. And then... A defined benefit plan is different than everything else because it's not based upon, um, it's not based upon, well, it's it kind of, it's, it's all what you say you hope to put in, kind of. Isn't that kind of how it works? Well, a defined benefit plan, a 401k and the rest of the plans that we've been talking about are defined contribution plans. You don't have any idea what your benefit's going to be when you retire. A defined benefit plan is the opposite. Under a defined benefit plan, um, you d- define the benefit that you're going to receive at retirement, and then each year you have to fund an amount that will provide that benefit at some future date. So it, since, since it's backwards, give an example so people would understand what you're talking about. Well, defined benefit plans are for those people probably over age 50. We can, you can put in more money than the, uh, what you can put in through a defined contribution oftentimes. They, uh, let's say that a, a doctor, for example, wants to put away $150,000 into a, a defined benefit plan. Well, then we run the numbers to see what benefit that will provide at retirement. Mm-hmm. Then you have to have an actuary involved who determines how much of a cost there is to that each and every year to come up with that benefit at a person's retirement. 
So they'll okay, figure so out then how the, much. Based upon those numbers, then, that's how much they contribute to their pension plan, right? That's correct. And there's, as far as I'm concerned, there aren't enough defined benefit plans out there today. It's remarkable because when you think about it, it's, it's better than a solo 401k. Yes, it's a gold mine. But it's so, but you, you know, here's the thing. When you talk to most people and to the credit, your credit, really, Charmaine, when you talk to them and say, how about let's do a defined benefit plan for client XYZ, they don't know how to do it. They don't understand what it is, and they don't understand how lucrative it can be. Exactly. And plus, they're scared off in addition to the cost of having an actuary examine this plan each year. But when you think of the additional deductions that people can take through a defined benefit plan, they're just cutting off their nose to spite their face. So in some situations, it might be like a $300,000 contribution, right? Mm-hmm. Right. The maximum so you figure benefit. This person might be in the 50% tax bracket, so they're saving $150,000 by putting $300,000 away. Mm -hmm. And the expense is moot compared to everything else. Mm-hmm. You have but, to look at the... But here's the thing. When you're listening to this show, you're getting information that nobody else knows about. And I want to tell you something. If you're somebody that's highly compensated, whether you're self-employed or not, and you, you're, you're saying, gee, this sounds interesting. I never heard of this before. You want to give Charmaine a call. Her phone number is 204-7577 or call her at the... Um, uh, financial guys uh, at 633-1515 because she is an expert in the field of pension plans. And, you know, they have set up some of these pension plans to really affect very highly compensated people. And if you think sometimes when they say that the rich people got all the tax breaks in this particular situation, this tax break can be really remarkable for somebody highly compensated. Mm-hmm. What's the biggest you ever saw anybody put into a defined benefit contribution? A single person. Just oh. out of the out of curiosity. Oh well. Two seventy five, oh, well. probably two hundred and seventy five thousand. Now what happens when you so you have the defined benefit? What what happened if you can't let's say this year you got the money to put it in, but next year you don't have the money to put it in. What happens then? Well, that's why you want to be very careful who you set these plans up for because they should be prepared to continue this plan for okay, so a number of years. Okay, so they have to fund it no matter what. However, in the future, having said that, in the future, the benefit that you're funding for can be reduced. It should not be reduced each and every year or every other year. There should be some amount of solidity in the benefit they've chosen to fund for. All right, let's go to the text, Chris. We got a yep, text? We got a couple texts. We'll do the one pertaining to Charmaine. If I have three businesses and one of them I run by myself, and in that business I met I make a hundred and twenty five K, can I do a solo for that one business? Yes. Absolutely. Now, but let's talk about employees. If you have employees, uh you then you're out of the. Then you have to do a regular form. That's okay. correct. That's correct. But if he's by himself or she's by herself, then they could do a solo four hundred one k. Yes. Yes. Okay. If it's yep. if the business if she's it, or he's it, that's they can so do the solo. So it might be Corporation A, Corporation B, and Corporation C, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yep. All right. and Other questions? Yep. Other text, Chris? I received a Tesla this year as a gift from my son. He oh, paid how nice. Yes, he paid <laughs> tax on the crypto he turned in to cash to buy it last year. Do I also have to pay tax to pay on this gift? Well, you don't have to pay taxes ever on a gift. Right. Your son So gifts the recipient of a gift never pays taxes on the gift. The person who has to file the gift tax return would be your son, I'm assuming it's the son, uh, that gave you the Tesla. That person has to do a gift tax return because it was more than $16,000. Right. right. Right? 
Yep. So your son is the one who has to file a return. He and won't he's not going to pay taxes on it. Right? Exactly. No money unless owed. His he's income, just... Unless his net profit is over like $12 million upon his death. So, yeah. so he files that gift tax return, which just is an information return. And, um, and, but you, the recipient of the, and by the way, you can tell him my phone number, six three two seven eight eight six. No, I mean, that's wonderful. What a wonderful son. Right, right, right. right. All right, but we want to thank you, Charmaine, for your time uh, on Saturday, a beautiful Saturday. There's not that many of these kind of Saturdays in uh, Western New York. Uh, Charmaine Case, she's a registered investment advisor, 401k specialist from the Financial Guys. Uh, The phone number for the Financial Guys is 633-1515. Her phone number is 204-9577. And her website is retirementserviceproviders.com. So retire- and I'm going to tell you, listen to what she said. If There are lots of ways to save lots of money in taxes. If you're somebody making a lot of uh, money, whether it's you're setting up a, a pension plan for your employer employees or yourself, there is a lot of ways that you can put money aside. It saves you a lot of money in taxes, saves you, uh, and and let's face it, it funds your future, which is so important. And Charmaine, I just want to thank you so much. You were a great guest. Uh, any last words of wisdom you want to tell everybody? I, if I have a second, I'd like to say something about those people, uh, and maybe the, even this woman that asked about the solo. If you are scared off, of making contributions on behalf of your employees, think of this, that if you have the plan that best suits your needs, the tax savings will, in most instances, more than pay for any contribution you might have to make for your employees. People get all... uh, yeah, crazy because that's a deduction that's right. an employer and then it's a du- mm-hmm. deduction over and above the, everything so right. they're going to pay it to the government or give it to their employees right but the bottom line is saving money for upon retirement it's so important well boy we want to thank you so much and during the week if any of you have any questions you can go to our website at egtax.com uh, ask the tax lady if you're getting love letters uh correspondence um, don't just pay the bill. Please give us a call so we can look at everything for you. I can't tell you how many times the bills that you receive are incorrect and uh, more clarification can get rid of a, t- a proposed tax liability. Until next week, I'm Esther Gullius, the tax lady, with Christopher Fabian, uh, Char- Charmaine Kays from uh, Next Financial, Financial Guys. Until next week, thanks for listening. Have a great, wonderful summer day. <laughs>